Welcome to Free Academic English. I'm Geraldine and today, given the current situation, we are going to talk about viruses. I'm really not a fan of viruses, but it's important to know about them. They are interesting things, because thing is what we can call them. We are going to learn three interesting facts about them, but before we learn about them, we need to know how to pronounce the word correctly and how to spell it. How do you spell this word? V-I-R-U-S V-I-R-U-S Virus It's a countable noun, so the plural is viruses V-I-R-U-S-E-S V-I-R-U-S-E-S To pronounce this word, we use several sounds that we don't have in other languages like Spanish For example, virus is with a V, not with a B so we need to pronounce it correctly with a V sound. The I in virus sounds I, like a long I in English, Vi. The R in English is always R, never R or R, so we pronounce R, vir. Then the U, since the syllable is not stressed, we just pronounce it with a schwa, the minimum sound in English, U. And the final letter is an S. So we pronounce virus, virus. And plural adds a syllable, z, viruses. But what is the definition of it? We are going to take a look at it with word reference. In word reference, we have the definition of virus. We have the pronunciation with the phonetic alphabet, virus. And then we're going to read some definitions. One says, a very small living thing causing infection, which reproduces only within the cells of living hosts, mainly bacteria, plants, and animals. I don't like it because a virus is not a living thing. Let's look for another definition. The second definition is better. An ultra-microscopic 20 to 300 nanometers in diameter, metabolically inert infectious agent that replicates only within the cells of living hosts, mainly bacteria, plants, and animals, composed of an RNA or DNA core, a protein code and in more complex types a surrounding envelope. Good. This one says any a group any of a group of submicroscopic entities consisting of a single nucleic acid chain surrounded by a protein code and capable of replication only within the cells of living organisms. Many are pathogenic. Yeah, good definitions. Okay, so three interesting facts about them. First, their size. They are tiny teeny. Thanks, they are super tiny. We have talked about the cell. We have talked about bacteria. And they are a lot bigger than viruses are. Can you believe that virus infect bacteria because they are so tiny they can enter bacteria and contaminate them? They are tiny. And I'm gonna give you another example so you can have an idea of that. If we imagine that our body, our body is composed of cells and one single cell is the size of the entire world, and we want to know the size of a bacteria, for example, we'll look for the size of a city like Lima. A bacterium is the size of the city, Lima. A virus will be a lot smaller, like the size of a small island here in Lima, like 10 times smaller than. A bacterium and again the world is one of our cells. Fact two. Fact two is that they are not living things. They're not living things. To be a living creature you need to have the capacity to reproduce yourself. Viruses don't have that and this leads us to fact number three. How do they reproduce if they can't reproduce? Because they can't. They use us. Well, us, animals, plants, even bacteria to reproduce. They take our cells as hostages and they trick us into believing that their genetic material is part of our genetic material. And we reproduce it like our, the normal cell does usually or more than normal, that's why we get sick. And, and then we create new viruses. They don't, we create them. Can you believe that? Well, it's an interesting fact about 
viruses too. Well, those were three facts about viruses. I hope you like them, that you enjoyed this video, and that you keep watching these videos. Uh, share, follow me, uh, comment, and thank you for watching. See you soon.